for my top 10 tips for anybody starting out in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I hope you find these helpful and I hope that you enjoy the video. First tip then is to use the let's go function as you explore. This is really useful. It'll give you kind of bonus XP as you're going around. It is less XP than manually fighting, but it is much quicker and it'll mean that you are stocking up on items so that you can craft yourself TMs in the future. Second tip then is to interact with any NPC that has a yellow speech bubble above their head. They, author, they often either have quests for you, they'll be trainers that want to fight you, they may have rewards for you, they may have uh, Pokemon trades or anything like this, but you're not going to know until you actually speak to them. Yeah, if you go past an NPC that has a yellow bubble above his head, just give them some attention. I highly recommend clearing these sets of badges areas together. Starting in the western area, that's because the Titan that we get up this way gives you the ability to cross water pretty much immediately. The ones in the eastern side, which are lower level and most likely to be within reach at the beginning of the game, are going to give you a higher jump and a faster sprint, and I feel like crossing water is much more important to be getting early on. In addition to that, um, the game seems to flow better if we start on the western side and then clear the rest of the game by working around the map in a counterclockwise direction, ending with this titan right here. It's also worth noting that out of the badges then, the titans are probably the most useful as they will give your mount new abilities, which I'll display on screen, and the normal gym badges, so the victory road path, will raise your Pokemon caught level obedience. What this means is any Pokemon caught below this level will obey your commands even if you level them higher than this. So for example, the Pokemon that you catch in the first area are probably going to be between level 5 and 10. If you level them to above 20, they will still obey you. But if you catch a Pokemon on above 20 out of the wild then it will not obey you. Step number four then is to fix your map. You can see here that the north pointer changes around as you move your right stick. This also moves if you move your mini map around and you come on here and it just does not face north. This makes it really confusing to read the map. I highly recommend pushing in your right thumb stick and fixing it so that it always stays north even when you turn around. Number five then is going to be when you are being serious about trying to catch a Pokemon, especially if it's one that you're not too worried about. So if it's like a shiny, maybe you might not be this pedantic, but you definitely want to try to hit it in the back so that you can get that sweet double turn. Number six is going to be to make sure that you visit each of these towers that we see all throughout Paldea. And when you reach the top of them, they'll usually have a game of gold chest up there, which is going to give you 50 coins. They'll often have good loot up there, so things like TMs and stuff. And if you want to get all of the Pokedex, you'll need 999 of them to get Goldinio. Next up then is going to be to make sure that you visit the sandwich shops that have the baguette sign above them in each city and place that you go to. Speak to this big guy here to gain new recipes or sandwiches throughout your adventure. Our next tip then, whether you buy it or make it yourself, is to make use of food along your adventure. Sandwiches and other types of food are very useful. They can help you in pretty much anything that you are doing. They'll give you various buffs. You can see on here we've got things like egg power, experience points, uh, and increased encounter rate depending on what it is. So if you're hunting for like a really rare Pokemon, you can increase that Pokemon's typing so you're more likely to see it. You can make it so that you can level up faster, anything like this. Next up is going to be to make sure you get your freebies. If you've played any previous games, such as BDSP, Legends Arceus, or any of the other games, come on over to the lady that's in the center of Mezagoza. You will be able to pick up some phone cases. I'm going to roll a future tip into this one. If you want to change your appearance and indeed the appearance of your phone case, press left on your D-pad and that's going to bring it up. And then that way we can come over here and we can actually equip the new phone case if that's what you wish to do. Or you can change anything else that you have on you. On the fly the only thing you can't change here is your hair and you might as well go to a hairdresser somewhere here if that's something that you are looking to do that takes us up to nine tips when we start this one which is going to be to manage your settings there's lots of stuff to do in here such as fast text you can also turn off things like cutscenes um, and all this other stuff if you want things to go a little bit faster the main one to talk about a lot though is the auto save this hasn't happened to me but apparently the game can crash at the moment unless it gets patched so make sure your autosave is on unless you're doing something specific, such as maybe you want to save in front of a shiny Pokemon to make sure you catch it, just to make sure that you are safe as you're running around and that you don't miss out on anything. Well, my next tip, what I'm going to say is to make sure that you interact with all of the Terradens as you go past them. Even if you don't want to take on the creature that's inside of there, when you back back out of it, you're going to gain LP. 
This LP seems to go up the more badges you have, which is really good because that means you're going to get more and more and more of it. And this is used as a currency so that you can get TMs and other items as you progress through the game. As a bonus tip, I want to finish on something that we can actually do with the Switch itself. This is actually a really cool setting. So press home on your controller and then go down into your settings here. Go all the way to the bottom where we have system and then go down again. And eventually what we will find is this manual zoom setting. Turn this on because this is really, really cool. And it's just something that can be quite useful to us when we're out and about. Because what that, what that means is if like, you see something over there, it's like, oh, what's that thing on top of that wall? Look, we can go ahead and we can double press home now. And we can go and have a, a bit of a closer look at that and be like, hey, what, what, are, you, what are you? What are you? I don't know what you are. See what I mean? It's just nice. We can use this on the map as well. So if we come out of this, oh, we go into the map now. We can even get some added zoom on our map with it. And so it's just really handy to have like this external added zoom that the Switch has for some reason. So those are my top tips when you're starting out in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Did I miss anything that you consider essential? Did you learn anything new? Let me know down in the comments.